will magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Well, God bless you, brothers and sisters. I thank you, uh, as always, for joining us on our website for this morning's uh, worship. Uh, today is actually Communion Sunday, so we are going to partake of the Lord's Supper. And um, I'm going to invite you to go and get your, you know, if you need to pause the screen now go and get your uh, your symbols of your sacraments as always you can use a piece of bread or cracker whatever you have with juice water and uh, because they're just symbols of the broken body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so I invite you to do that now if you need to and if not we're going to get ready to go into uh, the Lord's Supper all right okay well uh, as we uh, get ready to go into the uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper, I'm reminded that um, our Lord told us to do this in remembrance of Him. So as we prepare to partake of the Lord's body, what are we remembering? He says, do this in remembrance of me. Well, when Jesus says that, He's telling us uh, to remember, I want to say most importantly, the love that Jesus had for us, that when uh, he died on Calvary's cross and we partake of the, the body and the blood that we're remembering, most importantly, the love. But we're also remembering the sacrifice uh, that Jesus made uh, for us, that he sacrificed himself. We're remembering the grace uh, that was shed abroad to all of us, that his grace is covering our sin. He said, do this when you partake of this. Do it in remembrance of that. Do this in remembrance of the fact that he is our substitutionary sacrifice. That that, uh, because the wages of sin is death, and that's just the way it is. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And since the wages of sin is death, uh, Jesus uh, uh, was our substitute on Calvary's cross. He became our substitute, and he went and died on the cross for yours and my sin. But ultimately, and most importantly, that Jesus was our, uh, was the love that Jesus shed for us. He said, do this in remembrance of me. We also are remembering the, the covenant of our Lord. That this, uh, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, the bread and the wine, that we are, uh, we are remembering the covenant that Christ had for us. He says, when you do this, he says, this is my blood in the covenant which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. So this, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's a covenant that Jesus made. And we know that now, he is not a man that he should lie. So this covenant seals us. We are sealed with the blood of Jesus. In Matthew uh, um, uh, or Luke 22, the Bible says, this is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And so again, this is covenant. So we should remember that. Uh, but we should also remember that uh, Jesus expects us to be unified, that we are the body of Christ. So when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are remembering that we are doing this in unity. And I think that's why Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul says, examine yourself. Uh, in other words, if you have something against your brother or your sister, if, if, you know, if, it, if at all possible, everybody's, some people are just impossible to get along with. If you can't, then you pray for that person, you go on. But if at all possible, he wants us to be unified, unified in the body of Christ. And so when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're also remembering that we should do this together as a community, as a church, as a church family, because Jesus is coming back for his church. All right, so that's what we're about to do. I'm going to pray over our, our um, symbols, and then we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. Lord, we thank you for uh, this another third Sunday. Well, we have come together for the purpose of uh, uh, taking Holy Communion, and we pray that you would take these symbols and turn them from their carnal sense and turn them to their spiritual sense. We pray that you bless this bread, which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, that you would take this cup, which represents the blood uh, that came streaming down for the remission of sin, that you would turn it from its carnal sense to its spiritual sense. And Lord, help us to always remember Calvary and what you have done for us. And we thank you and we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, the Apostle Paul <clears throat> says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. 
shall we eat together? It says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We know from the scripture, and we know from our tradition at the church that we sing hymns. So I encourage you to get your hymn, uh, at the cross hymn, one of those good old hymns that helps to remind us of what Jesus did for us on the cross. We're so grateful. And really, that y'all, without that, we might as well not even be here. We might not, as well not even watch a video like this if Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. But because he did, uh, we can be grateful, we can be thankful, we can sing songs, and, and, and we know that things are getting better because we are on our way. We're just pilgrims passing through. Well, God bless you. I'm going to, this morning, for this morning's message, we're going to have a throwback um, a couple of calls I had gotten about prayer, and so we want to, um, I want to play a throwback. I think you'll enjoy it. Pray that you'll enjoy this message and, and get something out of it about, uh, about prayer. And we are looking forward to coming together and worshiping together again soon. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Have a great day. All right, now I'm going to ask if you would take your Bible and if you would turn in your Bible to Psalm, or the 24th division of the Psalm, Psalm number 24, and, um, and we're going to spend a few minutes in the Word. Before I uh, do that, uh, just another reminder that at 1, 1 p.m., the children have a Zoom, a Zoom church. So if you have your children or grandchildren, you want them to tune in to Zoom with uh, Sister Kim and Sister Melinda. Uh, Sunday school is at 8.30 with uh, Reverend Perkins. Uh, tomorrow morning, which will be Monday, tomorrow morning at 725, we'll have our Monday morning motivation. And then, of course, on Wednesday night, we are continuing in our uh, series on spiritual discipline. So I ask that you to call in on uh, Wednesday night at 630. All right. Uh, Psalm number 24, if you have your Bible. And um, and I'm going to get to that in just just a second. But. What I wanted to kind of talk about today was uh, has to do with answer prayer. And I believe that one of the hardest things for the Christian person, uh, spe uh, specifically those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ in our hearts, we believe we have faith and we're trusting God for uh, really for everything. Uh, one of the hardest things for us to deal with is to deal with unanswered prayer. Uh, that's very difficult for so many, so many of us, because the truth is every day and every night uh, all over the world, not just in the United States, but all over the world, throughout the day and every night, there are countless prayers that are going up before the Lord. And all of us are who are praying are waiting to see how God is going to respond to the prayers that we have prayed. Yes, the Bible does say, uh, uh, the Bible does say, ask and you shall receive. Uh, the Bible does say, knock uh, and the door shall be open. Uh, but if we are honest and honest with ourselves and, and just being straight with one another, uh, <clears throat> the truth is there have been times uh, in your life when you have asked. And yet you, you, you have yet to receive an answer. You have not. And you are still waiting uh, for the door to be open. And that's because all of us are trying to get a prayer through. We're trying to get a prayer through. Prayer is a very interesting Christian discipline. And it's interesting because our prayers are very often um, not answered in the way that we expect. Uh, we think God is going to uh, do one thing and many, many times uh, some of us are still waiting. We don't know what God is doing. We don't know if he's going to answer the prayer uh, the way that we want him to. We just don't know any of that. And really, especially during this time of, of quarantine, uh, it goes without question that uh, prayer is needed. It's needed during this time. Uh, we are being tested like 
never before. Uh, families, uh, you know, just having to be in the house with one another and deal with one another so much more perhaps than we have before. That is that is a testing time for so many, uh, so many of us, the health of the nation and not just this nation. I, I should say the health of the world uh, is being tested. You know, people are, are, are scrambling, trying to not catch uh, you know, this uh, coronavirus and all this uh, this stuff and uh, the economy is being tested in, in so many ways. I mean, it I mean, it's really, you know, a whole y- you know, what I'm trying to say is prayer is needed uh, during this time. And similarly, in our passage, uh, this was a time in Psalm 24 where prayer was absolutely needed. And David is actually dealing with uh, kind of, um, I, I say, the issue of unanswered prayer in Psalm number 24. And he raises this interesting question in, in that psalm. And the question is, who shall receive the blessing from the Lord? He, he, he's raising that question. And I, I just believe that all of us uh, want to be able to get down on our knees. We want to be able to go to the Lord in prayer, and we want to receive our blessing from the Lord. Uh, but it's interesting that David raises the question here, and it's interesting because sometimes we are seemingly left with the question after our prayer, and that question is, Lord, why not me? Uh, that, that's just a question that comes up, or why does one person get the blessing while others are still waiting on God to respond? We're still waiting to hear from the Lord. Well, if that's you, or if you're like me, uh, I need you to know, I want you to know that that you're not alone. You're not the only person that feels that way, for there are a whole lot of people that are in the same position that you're in right now asking God how, Lord, are you going to respond to my prayer? That's what I need to know. What, what's going to be your answer? What is the skinny on what I prayed about last week, last month, last year? What's going on, God? What is the answer to my prayer? Three quick things I want to point out about getting your prayer answered. And the first one is this. If you are struggling getting a prayer answered and waiting on God to respond to your prayer, if you're having a a difficult time with that, I believe this passage teaches us something. And the first one, as it relates to getting answered prayer, the first one is this. Do an examination of your lifestyle. You're waiting on a prayer to get uh, to, to you're waiting on a prayer to go through. You're waiting to hear what God is going, how God is going to respond do an examination on your lifestyle. David says in Psalm 24, here it is, if you have your Bible, David says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? Says he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. David is saying here that if you have been unsuccessful in reaching heaven with your prayer request, if you are waiting on God to respond, if you have been praying and praying and it seems like your prayer has fallen on deaf ears, then David is suggesting to us here that you may want to, as you wait, examine your lifestyle. In other words, y'all, sometimes the way you live The way you've been living can and will affect your prayer life. David says that now and again, you and I need to do a survey. We need to do an examination. We listen, we need we need to take a we need to take a real good look and analyze how we are living our lives if we're trying to get a prayer through. Um, You know, maybe you need to see if there's any unconfessed sin in your life. That could that could halt alter your prayer life. Maybe you need to examine how you have been treating the people around you. Are you loving your neighbor as yourself, or are you being selfish and hoarding all and 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 being rude and and uh, inconsiderate of other people? 
Uh, maybe you need to do an examination of the time that you are spending with the Lord that you have just, you know, maybe you just uh, totally ignore the Lord. And David is not suggesting here that you need to be perfect. That's not what he's saying. But all of us ought to try to be a better Christian than we were on yesterday. There are some things that you still shouldn't be caught up in. Some tricks of the enemy that you shouldn't steal after you've been walking with the Lord for so long. There are some things you ought not be getting caught up in. You know, we often want God to do things for us. Uh, we want him to bless us. We want God to give us the desires of our heart. We want our bless our prayers to be answered. But we forget the fact that being in a relationship with God means that we need to give him some of the things that he wants as well. That is not, this is not a one way street. That's not what relationship is all about. Relationship is a give and take. Listen to what Proverbs 28 and 9 says. Proverbs 28 and 9, the wise man Solomon says, God has no use for the prayers of people who won't listen to him. God has no use for your prayer if you won't listen to him. That's that's reciprocal. That You have to listen to him. There's some obedience that needs to take place. In other words, there is a connection between God answering our prayers and our obedience to his word. In other words, look, you just can't live any kind of way. You just can't do that and expect God to give you the desires of your heart. Yes, there are consequences to sin. There are consequences to disobedience. And sometimes it is the sin or, or something going on in your lifestyle that is causing this disconnect between your, the prayers you prayed and an almighty God. Verse four says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. That term clean hands there has to do with uh, that has to do with living clean before uh, God. I, you know, that has to do with uh, how you live your life. I, I believe it's hard for us to get a prayer through when you're sneaking and creeping. It, it's hard. It, it's hard to get a prayer through when you're hooking and crooking and you want a holy God to bless your life and to answer your prayer. Why? Because righteous Living is an important key in getting your prayers through to God. James 5 and 16 says that the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Wait a minute. Not only do you need to examine your lifestyle, but David also shows us here, here that if you want to get a prayer through, if you need your prayer to be answered, you also may want to examine where you are living. I make it plain. You need to examine where you are living. In the book of John, uh, chapter fifteen, verse seven, it says, "If ye or if ye if you uh, abide in me, it, that uh, word abide means to live, to set up residence, to make your abode. If you make your home in Him." And my word abide in you. You allow his word to live in you. You shall ask what you will. And the Bible says, and it will be done unto uh, you. Jesus is speaking up here about where you and I should make our abode. He's talking about our residence. He's talking about that place. Uh, you know, it is our default position in him. He Listen, he gives a promise in this verse that he will answer any prayer that you pray. But first, he needs to see if you are abiding in him. Are you making your home in him, taking up residence in him? Or are you making your residence in some in your wife? your girlfriend? Are you making your residence in your boyfriend or your children? Uh, have you set up residence? Have, do you make your abode uh, in your job? Is that the place where your heart, that's in your heart so much that God has no room uh, to take up residence in your heart because your heart is so filled with, uh, with your job, with your children, with your boyfriend? He says, no. He says, if you abide in me. That doesn't mean you can't do anything else, but what it does mean is he ought to have a place in your heart that's bigger than anything else. He's speaking about where we live, and he's speaking about how we need to first uh, allow him to take up. He's, he's really referring to fellowship with him. In other words, don't just come to the Lord 
when you need something. Uh, and then when the Lord gives you what you need or gives you what you want, you say, okay, Lord, well, thank you for that. Thank you for giving me, uh, thank you for getting me out the hospital. Now you can go on about your business. I got it from here. Uh, or Lord, thank you for giving me this car and I got my ride. I'm going to do my own thing. Thank you for doing what I needed you to do. Now go on, Lord. I don't need you anymore. No, it, listen, that is not the way Jesus says, no, you got to make your abide. You got to abide in him and he wants to abide in you more than anything else. It has to do with quality time. It has to do with um, learning about him. It, it has to do with talking to him in prayer. It has to do with intimacy with the Father. God wants you to be in him and he wants to be in you. You know, in uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, it was King Hezekiah. A good king, King Hezekiah, and he was about to die. And King Hezekiah, uh, uh, the Bible says that King Hezekiah prayed because uh, he was about to die and he prayed. And in his prayer, he reminded God of how faithful he had been to God. In other words, listen, y'all, Hezekiah uh, put some seeds in the ground earlier earlier in his life, and he remained faithful to God throughout his life. And that's a word in and of itself, uh, just right there, that listen, when you are faithful to God, even when things aren't going your way, if you can just remain faithful to him, even when things doesn't look the way you want it to look, just remain faithful to him, y'all, God will remember. But Hezekiah uh, 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 prayed, and the Bible says he turned his face to the wall, of course, and, and he prayed, and and uh, and when he prayed, the Lord answered his prayer. And, and the Bible says that God uh, gave uh, Hezekiah 15 more years of life. Why? Y'all, because God hears the prayers of those who spend quality time, who make their abide or make their abode in him and are in fellowship with him. Here it is. I'm almost done here. A lot of prayers go stagnant because we never spend any quality time with the Lord. All we want, get, give me what I want, and Lord, you're going about your business. No quality time, no Bible study time, no prayer time, nothing. Just give me what I want, and, and you're going about your business. But y'all, God doesn't operate like that. He wants to be in your life. He wants to listen. He wants to live in you and you in him. And I don't know about you, but my problems in my life seem a little bit lighter when I'm spending quality time with the Lord, because I know, I know that he is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. Last thing, and I'm done real quick here. Last thing, if you need to get a prayer through, if you need to get a prayer through, you're waiting on God to respond, examine your lifestyle. Uh, examine where you are living. That means we take up your abide in him, make your abode in him, live in him, him and you. And then thirdly, lastly, examine your faith. Examine your faith. In the book of Hebrews, uh, it deals with something called the Faith uh, Hall of Fame. And if you read in that, uh, in the book of Hebrews there, uh, you'll read in that Faith Hall that each person that's mentioned in, uh, I believe it's chapter 11 on, um, on faith. The Bible starts by saying, by faith, so-and-so did this, or by faith, so-and-so, by faith, Noah did this, by faith, Abraham did this, uh, all throughout that. And these great individuals were able to do wonderful things and big things, but the way they did it was simply by faith. We have to live our lives by faith. And by, in fact, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God, which means that faith is not one of the things that you need when you pray and you're waiting on God to respond. But, but faith is the key thing that you need to get your prayer answered. I'm done here. If you remember, it was the three Hebrew boys that didn't bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. And they decided that whether God delivered them from the fiery furnace or not, whichever way God chooses to do it, that God, we want you to get us out of the fiery furnace. But if you choose to or if you choose not to, we are not going to abandon our faith in you. We know that you know what's best for us, whichever way you decide to do it. We will not stop having faith in God. Why? Y'all, because faith always trusts 
that trust that God is going to give the best for his children, no matter how he chooses to answer. If he says no, it's for the best. If he says yes, it's for the best. God knows our end from our beginning. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And why, look, faith always trusts that God is going to give us the best answer. That's why the Hebrew boys were able to deal with that fiery furnace. Let me read one more to you. Habakkuk said it like this. Habakkuk, speaking about having faith in God and answer prayer, Habakkuk said, listen, although the fig tree shall not blossom, uh, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, all these bad things, there shall be no herd in the stalls. Listen, that was a famine uh, in the land. It, listen, no stall, no economy, no, listen, it, you know, the, you, you, you know, no food, everything was, was lacking. Habakkuk said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. In my lack, I'm going to, uh, no matter what's going on around me, I will rejoice knowing that God is a faith, is, will be faithful to me. Y'all, faith says, I'll pray, but however God chooses to answer, I know that it is best for me. How can I get a prayer through? Number one, you got to examine your lifestyle. How are you living your life? Are you living a raggedy life? Are you living a, a life filled with sin, doing this and doing that, and you're trying to get a prayer through? I don't know. Number two, examine where you live. You have to make your abide in Him. You can't just be, you know, all into your boyfriend so much, all into your job so much that you just left God behind. And God is wondering, you know, I blessed you with the job. I blessed you with this relationship. I provided for you. Now you left me. Can't do that. You got to make your abide in Him. And then third and lastly, you got to examine your faith in the one that you are praying to. Are you having faith in the one that you are praying to that he knows what's best for you? Well, I pray y'all receive it today. Um, we thank God for uh, answered prayer, but we also know that, that uh, this is a gospel of responsibility and all of us are responsible in some way. That's what relationship is all about. The relationship is about uh, give and take. It is a reciprocal thing. I pray that y'all receive that today. Well, if you are watching and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, we have some information uh, uh, provided for you here that we would uh, happily walk you through the scriptures and show you how you can be saved. We're glad that you joined us on this morning uh, to our church family. As always, you know, we miss you. Looking forward to seeing you soon and trusting that God is going to get us through this together. Let's remember to check on each other. Let's remember to continue to have faith uh, in God and, and uh, continue to live a life of faith for that will get us through the storm every time. I pray y'all receive it. Uh, God bless you today. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.
forgiven.